hey y'all welcome back to my channel this is tynetta from sting nail co and today i'm going to do a design tutorial on these super cute beetlejuice nails with hand painted art okay so first things first i'm going to start off with the stripe nails on the pinky and the pointer finger so for the base for the stripes i'm going to be adding our super white gel polish i'm doing one coat and as you can see one coat gives a full enough coverage for me to go ahead and move forward with the designs I'm going to apply one coat to both fingers and then I'm going to have her cure her hand in the LED light for 60 seconds. When she's done curing, I'm going to go ahead and start in with the stripes. I'm using the 15 millimeter liner brush from Sting Nail Co. to go ahead and create these super straight parallel lines. The black that I'm using is our super black gel polish as well. And as you can see, this brush makes it very, very easy to do these straight lines. You just want to take the brush, lay it down, and just pull it down. As long as you have your fingers resting, as you can see, I have my ring finger resting on the middle finger from my other hand. That's what's going to keep your hands from shaking and keep you with a steady hand while you're drawing these lines. You guys know I'm all about transparency, so even though I have a steady hand and I've been doing nails for however long, everybody still messes up. So if you mess up, just go ahead and wipe it off and redo it. That's the beauty of gel polish. You can always just wipe it and start over. And of course, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the pointer finger. Once I'm done with those stripes, I'm going to have her cure her hand again for 60 seconds. And then we're going to move on to the drip. For the drips, I decided to use this bright green polish just to make it pop a little bit. I know a lot of people do like the purple with the Beetlejuice nails, but I don't know. I just wanted to have fun with some bright colors. So basically, I'm just outlining where I want the drips to go. Then I'm going to go ahead and carve out the cuticle area, make it nice and clean. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the drip shape. You do want to make sure this is not too thick so that, that polish will cure in the light but i don't want it to be too thin because i don't want to have to do two coats of this i'm doing the same thing on the pointer finger just trying to switch up the location and the length of the drips to make it look really random and organic once i'm done with that i'm going to have her cure her hand in the light for 60 seconds Okay, so I went on Google and searched Beetlejuice. This is one of the pictures that came up. So this is what I decided to do. And for this video, I'm going to have my reference picture next to me. I'm always looking right at my reference picture so I know what I'm um, drawing. And I also decided to put that on the screen so you guys can get a little bit of a view of what's going on as well. So starting out, what I'm basically doing is sketching out all the main shapes and details, such as his mouth, his nose, his eyes, and his hair. Everywhere that there's different colors, I'm basically just creating an outline. Because when I get into painting, as you can see, all I'm doing here is filling in the lines. It's like a coloring book. I like to start with whatever color is most dominant so I can go ahead and get that out of the way. And that way I can go ahead and start adding in some of the details. So I started with the skin using a nice light purple color. I do notice that the colors that I chose were not exact matches to the picture, but I wanted his skin and his hair and everything. I wanted it to pop a little bit more. The cartoon that I'm referencing is a little bit pastel, a little bit washed out. So I wanted to use some brighter colors just to give him a little bit more life. So as you can see, I went ahead and filled in those teeth. And in between all these colors, I am curing in the light. Um, you want to make sure that you cure in between any colors that are touching because if not, they will bleed into each other. And it is a lot of back and forth. So you do have to cure each color individually unless they're not next to each other. So for instance, right now I'm filling in his mouth. Next, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the area around his eyes. I did not cure in between those just because they're not touching. So that's going to save me a step. 
Um, but basically while I'm doing that, after I finish this part, I'm going to have this hand in the light and then I'm going to be basically working on the other hand. Yeah, it's a lot of back and forth, but it's worth it in the end. So once I get all those colors filled in, I'm going to use my black gel paint. The difference between gel paint and gel polish, gel paint is a lot thicker and it does not move and it's very, very opaque. So you only need literally one swipe and it's going to show through dark black. Okay, so gel paint is good for details. Gel polish is good for large spaces. All I'm doing right now is using that 15 millimeter liner brush to go ahead and draw in those details. Literally, I'm just looking at the picture and putting that black wherever it is on the picture. I am curing periodically, I just didn't show that, but you, when I do detail lines, I like to cure every now and then just so I don't bump something and mess something up. And this is my first time doing this type of character art. Also, this was my first time really like shading in, which I'll show you guys at the end on the other finger. But as you do your character art and your nail art, everything sort of evolves over time. So don't stress it, just, just start. If there's something that you wanna try, just start and you'll learn along the way of you trying different things that will work better next time. Once I'm done with all those details, I'm going to go ahead and top coat with matte. Next, I'm going to go ahead and start with the sandworm. This is the picture that I'm looking at. And as you can see, it's still in the bottom corner so you guys can see as well. And I'm just basically, again, sketching out those basic shapes and basic details so I know where to place my colors. Once I'm happy with the sketch, I'm gonna start with the largest color, which was the white, and that's the base for everything else. So I'm just filling in the white on um, the mouth and the body of the other little worm thing. Again, like I said, this was my first time doing something like this detail to where it's like two faces little bitty teeth and it took a little bit of time i'm not gonna lie but it was worth it in the end so yeah as you can see i'm just going back in with the blue the purple and the black the only good thing about this character he really didn't have that many colors so it was pretty simple to do as far as color matching but yeah just drawing those stripes trying to match it up to the picture to the best of my ability and then you know continue adding your details so as you can see i'm going to fill in the mouth add the eyeballs add those little bitty teeth and i am carrying in between all these small details now i'm going to continue drawing the outline and filling in the details on the mouth and everything like that and as you can see i did kind of get some of those teeth filled in with black where it should be white but i'm going to go back and fill that back in with my detail brush as you can see here i'm just fixing that up and so that's why I say like it doesn't really matter if you mess up you can always fix it don't stress it or like freak out you can always fix it so yeah as you can see you really want to work from the bottom up so whatever's the base color and then moving up towards whatever those small details are leave the small details for last because they're just I mean they're small especially on somebody's nail if the teeth aren't perfect nobody's going to be able to tell I mean look how small that is in retrospect to the rest of her hand Okay, so I mixed some black gel polish with some top coat, and now I'm just adding a little bit of shading into the areas where they naturally would be darker. I added some white for highlights around the lips just to match the picture, and then I went ahead and cured that, and I added matte top coat to him. Added some crystals on the ring finger, and this is the finished product. I think these came out super, super cute. Just in time for spooky season. If you like this video or if you learned anything, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. You can shop all the products that I used in this video at stingbeauty.com, and I will see you guys later.